Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today's video I'm going to be talking about the Mitas U7 tires and um, let you know exactly why I'm using these tires for the past four years, what's so good about these tires and uh, the difference between the U7, U7 Plus and uh, the Dakar version of this tire. So if you have nothing to do, come with me and I'll let you know. So welcome back guys and thanks very much for watching and uh, if you're new to this channel and you like the content please consider subscribing and hit the thumbs up there for me that keeps me motivated to create and share contents like this in the future. So before I let you know exactly what, why I, kept, I keep using these tires for the past four years and what's so good about them, let me just say that I have no affiliation with Mitas, I don't get any sponsorship with the products on this channel. Uh, everything that I review here, it's uh, that I buy with my own money, things that I buy with my own money. And my review is my own experience with the, the products that I review. And this tire is, is no exception. So if, if you've been following my channel for a while now, you know that I've used these tires, as I say, for four years. I had three sets of these tires on the Transalp. And I'm going to the second set of these tires on the Africa Twin. I'm not saying the Mitas tires is the best tire out there. There are probably tires that are similar to Mitas or even better than Mitas. But for me, for the past four years, this tire has proven to be the best choice that I've made. So what do I like about this tire that I keep buying them again and again for the past four years? First of all, it's how this tire is so stable. Um, on the pavement and off-road, uh, you don't get the hand shakes like you get in any other knob tires. You can corner really well with this tire. They got a great grip on the dry and wet surface. Um, the longevity, the great longevity, um, I can do, I've done already maybe more than 14,000 kilometers on the back wheel, in the back tire, and uh, in the front I did a little bit more. Um, and uh, they I just good for everything. I mean, if you're looking for 50, 50 or 60, 40 tire out there, like I don't think like I can find anything that can supersede this tire. So, uh, what's the difference between the, this one, which is the EO7 and the EO7 Plus? So, uh, and there is the Dakar version, and I'll go in a minute, the difference between the Dakar version. Uh, the EO7, it's a 50, 50 tire, and uh, the, spaces between the blocks are close is a more square profile it has the same chevron here which makes this tire great for the pavement because that's why you don't get the hand shakes on the on the bars on your handlebars because of these um, the eo7 plus on the other hand is a 60 40 tire the spaces between the the blocks are bigger and the blocks itself are a little bit bigger than this the blocks of the EO7 Plus is round, a little bit more round, and uh, that makes that tire a really good tire for the pavement and uh, for the cornering as well. Um, not that this one is not as great, but this one is performs better on the, um, on the dirt. So let me go to the garage and I'll show you the difference between this one and the, the EO7 Plus, so you can see the difference between the design here. And that you can see the difference between the EO7 and the EO7 Plus. You can see the chevron here is actually thicker on the EO Plus, EO7 Plus, and uh, the spaces here are much wider than the EO7. The profile as well, it's you know, this tire is a, kind of old now, you won't see as much, but as you can see, it's rounder. The profile is rounder. The EO7, it's a bit more square. And that's the difference between the Euro 7 Plus, which is this one, and the Euro 7. The difference between the car and the standard version is that the car has a hard, it's built with a hard compound and uh, stiffer sidewalls. So, um, I to say that that allows you to run the tire with the lower pressures if you're actually running the tire off-road and you need to lower down your pressure. And that avoids you from uh, damaging your rims. Also, it's uh, less prone to punctures or tear on the sidewall of the tire if you are doing um, off-road and hit a rock or something. 
Um, but on the downside, the Dakar version, because it's made with hard compound, is not as grip as the standard version, especially on the pavement uh, and on the wet surface. So I've heard a lot of people complain about them being very slippery uh, on the wet pavement. So take that in consideration. Another main factor as well is the fact that if you are if you get a puncture with, with the, one of the car versions and uh, you're in the middle of nowhere and you try to take this tire off the rim, it's going to be very, very hard because of the stiffer sidewall it makes it very difficult for you to mount and dismount the tire. So taking that in consideration when you buy in the Dakar version. Um, also, meters say that the Dakar version is 20 percent, uh, has 20 percent more longevity than the standard version. And that's probably true based on the hard compound, the where it's probably uh, much slower. But again, so you're gonna have like a tire that doesn't grip as much as the standard version. So that's the difference between the Dakar and the, the standard versions of the EO7. So with all of that, so I think Star is great for you. Well, it's been good for me for the past four years. The standard version, I never used the Dakar. And uh, I'll be continuing using this one. It's going to go to the XRV soon. And um, is that a good option for you? Well, let me put it this way. If you are going to be doing um, a bit of road and uh, pavement and you want a, an option to get a, hit the dirt whenever you actually feel like with a tire that has a great longevity, uh, it's a very stable. Uh, a tire that actually performs really well off-road and um, on-road, then the meters yourself is probably a good type for you to take in consideration. Um, if you are going to um, be more on the pavement and uh, a little bit less off-road, but you like the option to go off-road, then it meters your seven plus, then it will be the tire that you should be looking for. It's more uh, road oriented tire than an EO7. So, again, if you consider the, the things that I say about the Dakar version, uh, about the mounting the tire and about the, the, the not as having much grip as this one, you can go for the Dakar version if you are planning to do a lot off road and um, have a tire that you can lower down your pressure, have a tire that it has the stiffer sidewalls that you're not gonna get a tear and uh, less prone to punctures. If you are going that way, just keep in mind that like uh, a lot of people already complain about the tire, the Dakar version being very uh, slippery. So take that in consideration. So whatever decisions you decide to make, whatever tire you decide to, to pick, EO7 or EO7 Plus or the Dakar version for that matter, just Keep an eye, keep a, a mind on everything that I say on this video. And uh, whatever choices you make, you won't be disappointed. I would recommend if you're not going to uh, go really off-road to not get the Dakar version. As the Dakar version, as a lot of people have complained about the, the grip of that tire. But I can say for sure that the EO7, EO7 Plus tires, you won't be disappointed on, with using them. So... Uh, with that said, guys, thanks so much for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.